Hello, grace and peace to every one of you in Jesus' name. Who's the first to join this morning? Clean the drunk first to join. Clean is first. One, two. Unusual favor say good morning first. Clean showed up first. Unusual favor say good morning. Then you have Jane. Yeah. Then the rest. I think we're in First Timothy chapter number what? Is it six or five? I think we're in First Timothy chapter six. I think we're in First Timothy chapter six. Please confirm that we're in First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six is where we are this morning. Yes, unusual favor is it's a babe, I agree. <laughs> Good morning, Bishop Larish. Good morning. Tell me favor, I see you. First Timothy chapter six is where we're at. Good morning, Priscilla. My baby, how you doing? First Timothy chapter six. Okay, yeah, we're in First Timothy chapter six, verse one to twenty. I believe. First Timothy chapter six, verse one to twenty. First Timothy six, one to twenty. Michael J.J. Dr. Flo, I see you. First Timothy 6, one, is it 1 to 21? Would it, would it be 1 to 21? Oh, yeah, 1 to 21. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 1 to 21. Share the videos, invite your friends. I saw her, good to see you again. Uh, you guys try and make it to church. Uh, yesterday was amazing. If you missed service yesterday, my God. It was too amazing. Yesterday it was amazing. Yesterday was amazing. Why did you miss the service? Why did you miss the service yesterday? It was amazing. It was amazing. Why did you miss the service yesterday? It was too amazing. Ah. Uh. So, so what, what, what blessed you part most the service yesterday? It was just too amazing. Watched online. It was amazing yesterday. My God. First Timothy 6, um, 1 to 9. I mean, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, I mean, let's pin this. Find your Bibles. First Timothy 6. It was one to nine. <laughs> yes, there was beautiful love, life, impact. I'm not sure I'm continuing the series. I wanted to, but it was so good. I don't think I want to put anything on, on, on top of that. If I don't know, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Yeah, we have our declaration. First of all, logic sound killed it, and then message. Was, let me tell you, yes, this service was amazing. Like logic sound, phew. And then the word, it was too good. It was too good. It was an experience. Never heard the story of Neman preach that way. You never heard the story of Neman preach that way. Uh, that's something else. It was something else. It was a good. We always knew Neyman to be the star of the text. We didn't know that it was the girl. Uh, star of the text. In when the Melan service sound, logic sound was good. Bisola, Mila too. It's been a long time I saw you. Let's not fight. Okay, let's make our declaration at the count of three. One, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. 
Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ayo Vincent says we need a master class on how to study the scriptures. <laughs> okay, I think the most painful thing for people like I is that they've read that thing before. I will not read it again to them. So then they are like <laughs> Ah, uh, they will not read it again and say, no, 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 they are not going to agree. Uh, beautiful. Fantastic. Let's do First Timothy chapter 6 from verse 1 to 21. 1 to 21. First Timothy 6 verse 1 to 21. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me advise you guys. Don't let this whole election thing trigger you. Don't let it trigger you. Don't let it trigger you. Don't let the election thing trigger you. If you have voted, leave it in the hands um, of God. If, you know, pray towards it. You know, I say PVCs pray, vote count. You know, um, after you have counted, pray. Go back to prayer and just stay there. Don't don't let anything trigger you. Watch your space. Uh, watch your space. Don't. Don't give yourself to media. You've done what you're supposed to do, which is to vote. What are you going to do more? Go on the street? No, don't do that. Um, don't feel the anger. Don't feel... Don't, mm -mm. No, no, no. That's not what we need right now. Um, what you can do and pray, pray. We keep praying and God knows how to handle the things in the best of way. First Timothy chapter six from verse one. First Timothy chapter chapter six from verse one. Let as many born servant and as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Usually I will pray before reading this. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Open up our eyes to see Christ. Let the study of your word reveal Jesus to us. Unveil our identity in Christ. And edify our lives in a different dimension in Jesus' name. Amen. Let as many bound servant. Does that remind you of anything in the in the, in Ephesians? Does that remind you of anything in Ephesians? Let as many bond servant as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and his doctrine may be may not be blasphemed. That reminds you of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5. It says, Masters or servants, be, um, be obedient to your masters, not in eye service. Not in eye service. And those who are who have belief, um, and those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and believer and beloved teach and exalt these ones i want you to see verse 2 very well and those who have believing masters let them not despise them because they are brethren what is he saying don't read don't read past i was saying how to read the bible i'm teaching you how to read the bible Every verse counts. One principle of how to read the Bible is every verse counts. See verse 2. And those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren. What is he saying? That because you are working with somebody who is a deacon in your church doesn't mean you should see them finish. That's what he's saying. Don't despise them because they are your... Ah, that one is mine. Ah, he's the head of ushering now. He's the head of ushering. No! He's the head of ushering and you are in the ushering department in church. Don't go to work late. Not do see finish. That's what he's saying here. But rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exalt these things. Don't take them from granted. Don't see them as your guy. Don't disrespect them. 
So it's my guy now. Why is he your guy? He's your boss. Can you explain? Don't take them for granted. Don't take them for granted. Respect their office. Even if you come from the same church cell unit. That means you can be a dick in our work in church and you are in that, you are the assistant um, in that department. When you get to the office, don't say, oh, ah, Deacon, you know, now we had prayer meeting yesterday. I'm not going to come on time. No, you will get there on time or else you get into problem. Who's your guy? See what I mean? Ah, let me see this in. Let's see what TPT brings something beautiful. TPT verse 2. Especially honor and respect employers who are believers and don't despise them. But serve them even more for they are fellow believers. They should be at peace with them as beloved members of God's family. Be faithful to teach them these things as their sacred word obligation. You see that? You see that? Let's see what message says, the petty message. It says... These are the things I want you to teach and preach. If you have leaders who, if you have leaders there who teach otherwise, who refuse the solid word of the master, Jesus Christ, controversy, no, no, no. Slaves and Christian masters all the more. Okay, it says respect the masters. Sorry, I'm going to read this in the message translation. It combined, uh, what about if your master is not believing or a believer? You do what you have to do. But he's just saying the fact that he's a believer doesn't mean you should take him for granted. And then pray in tongues. When you get to the office, man of sorry, son, I'm a shala, blah, kida, blah, blah. No, 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 don't do that. If he's a believer, if he's a non believer, do well. The Bible says be faithful to your master. That through your behavior, they may even come to the knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus. Let me do verse 1 and 2 in the message translation. Whoever is a slave must make the best of it, giving respect to his master so that. Outsiders, unbelievers, don't blame God and our teaching for his behavior. Slaves with Christian masters, all the more so, the masters are really their beloved brothers. Let's move. Verse 3, New King James Version. Glory to God. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with dispute, argument over words from which come envy, thrive, strive, rivalings, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men, of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain from such withdrawal. Let me see this. I want you to see verse 3, 4, 5 together. From such withdraw yourself. There are people that you're supposed to withdraw yourself from. The Bible shows them. Who are the people? If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to the wholesome words, which the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over our words, from which come envy, thrive, rivalings, evil suspicions, suspicions, um, useless wranglings of men, of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, making merchandise of the gospel, from such withdraw yourself. That's what the Bible says. Let me do 345 in TPT. TPT 345. But if anyone spreads false teaching that does not agree with the healthy instruction of our Lord Jesus, teaching that the holy awe of God is not important, then they prove they know nothing at all. It's obvious they don't value or hold their, the healing words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They are covered with the clouds 
of deceit they are loaded with controversy and they love to argue their opinions and split hairs the fruit of the ministry of contention competition evil suspicion they add misery to many lives by corrupting their minds with cheating them of the truth they equate the worship of god with making great sums of money the bible says from such withdraw yourself you understand withdraw yourself from such glory to god you know we draw yourself from such amen amen glory to god glory to god so um we're gonna move to um king james new king james version verse six now godliness with contentment is great gain godliness with contentment is great gain i'm gonna say this again godliness with contentment is great gain is really great gain verse six i'm going to read verse six in the message which i hope i can get it in the message translation i just move okay it's not available godliness with contentment is great gain great gain that means it's okay to be content with what you have in the name of jesus is great gain we have profit that is greater than theirs our holy of god we have many necessarily is okay you no know, this is i'm trying to read a message translation verse six with devout lives a devout life does bring wealth but it is rich simplicity of being yourselves with god amen i need to move new king james but godliness with contentment is great gain for we have brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and clothing with these we shall be content so bible is saying godliness and contentment is great gain you did not bring anything you won't take anything out but if you have food you have clothing you have a place to lay your head you shall be content but those who desire to be rich fall into temptations and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition let me say this god does not have a problem with you having money god has a problem with money having you see what i mean god doesn't have a problem with you having money but god does have a problem with money having you make sure the money does not have you but god has a problem with you just having money but god doesn't have a problem with you have god has a problem with money having you don't let the money have you some of you the way the money has gripped your heart is is ridiculous amen then you hear this all the time money is the root of all evil is not in the scripture the bible says for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil of which some have strayed from their faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows for the love of money you hear that money is the root of all the evil no the love of money the passion the drive that means whatever you do you see even when you do business let impact be the motivation not money be the motivation impact should bring profit i agree impact should bring increase i agree but impact should be the motivation money shouldn't be the motivation even in business let me see tpt verse 10 verse 10 loving money is a root of all kinds of evil in that loving money there is insatiable greed the the love of money there is insatiable greed for money yeah purpose driven not money driven purpose driven impact driven not money driven purpose driven will bring profit yes purpose driven should bring impact it should bring profit but you're, you are not waking up in the morning for money you see that's why except you put my account details here or you put i'm not going to raise money here i didn't wake up this morning for money it wasn't it's not it's not in that's why my numbers are low now 
If I want to raise money, I know what to do in the morning. By now, I'll be gathering my own, maybe 2,000, 3,000 people every morning, shouting amen and then put, you know, people should be able to give they want to give, but I'm not waiting. What is driving me to, to do this every morning? It's not, there's, a, there's no offering. Do you know my account numbers? Do you see an offering time here? It's the, the, what brings me is that somebody wakes up this, this morning, is sitting or staying by their phone, believing God that I will come online. And I believe that when I come online, God will send a prophetic word to them. God will send something to them that will change their life completely. Not with money to drive me come here. But there's a way the money will be coming every day like that. I'm like, oh, man, today, today, let's, 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 let's all today. Ah, Jesus, they drive me. It's not money driven, it's purpose driven. Yeah. So even love, love and money is root of all evil. Some people run after it so much that they have given up their faith, craving more money pushes them away from the faith into error, compounding mysteries, compounding mysteries and misery into their lives. Because money is a spirit. Isn't it? Ask why that money driven people get your point. Money is a spirit. It drives them. And isn't let me say this. They may be getting ahead faster. Doesn't mean they are making impact. Too. They are getting ahead now. It looks like you, they are moving, but guess what? The things that are suffering for that thing, you have no idea. But when they burn out. Hmm. No, you know, growth, fibroid is growth. Though. Fibroid is growth. Yeah. Mammon can get you grow while you're growing fibroid. You're not growing healthy. So every belly in front of you doesn't mean you're carrying the baby. Every big belly in front of you doesn't mean the person is carrying a baby. It can be fibroid. Fibroid not growth too. See, it may be going ahead of you, but let me also tell you, cancer cell uh -uh, grow, grows out. Let me also say this to you. Uh, something I want to share with you just now. Some things are more valuable than those things that they are pursuing. Small, they are more valuable than those things they are pursuing. So let them do what they are doing. You'll be here. Time will tell who really is running fast or running slow. Yeah, time will tell. Posterity will judge. And for my own profession, the most important thing is in it would be those of you who were in the class when I was teaching this in um, in um, Logic Foundation class, and I said to them, We have I have a boss that I'm reporting to, he's called the Chief Shepherd. It's called the Chief Shepherd. Yeah. And I will report to him. So we have somebody we are reporting to. So we'll report to him. Yeah. 11, let's go on. They never mark the script. You understand? We're all writing the exam now. You know, it's like extra shit, extra shit, extra shit right now. But let's see the script. You discover that you were doing... You were writing physics in, in Yoruba education. But you, man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. I'm in verse 11, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of of many witnesses. Why is it a why is it a good fight of faith? It's a good fight because it's a fixed fight. You hear what I said? 
is a good fight because it's a fixed fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you have also called and have confessed the confession in the presence of many witnesses. See what I'm saying? Verse 13, I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Jesus Christ who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep the commandment without spot blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing which he will manifest in his own time he who is the blessed and only potentate the king of kings and the lord of lords who alone has immortality dwelling in unapproachable light whom no man can see or can see to whom be glory and honor forever amen yeah 17 command those who are rich in this present age <laughs> leave that for another day because there's another age coming there will be people who will be rich in that present age you see what i'm saying command those who are rich in this present age there there will be people who will be rich in that present age coming command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty not to trust in uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy who gives us richly all things to enjoy that means if you are rich right now calm down don't be haughty and do not trust in uncertain. That means your wealth is not certain, riches, but in the living God who gives all things, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they be rich in good works. Because you can be rich in your account, but you're not rich in good works. Let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, ready to give, willing to share, ready to give and willing to share. So once you are rich in, you have physical riches, be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share. You are ready to give and willing to share is good works. Do you remember what I said to you in class? The cross makes your good count. That's what he's saying here. The cross makes your good count loaded and generous. Verse 19, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. The cross makes your good count. The cross makes your good count storing for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on what eternal life lfc you appreciate that oh timothy god what was committed to your trust god what was committed to your trust avoiding the profane and idle babbling contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge by professing in some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Grace be with you. Amen. I pray for you that you not be weary in good, in, in good doing. You will be fervent in spirit. For the one who has promised will be able to bring it to pass whatever he said concerning you in jesus name i pray that the book of remembrance is open concerning anything that concerns you that all the things you've done with your hands the good works they will not go unremembered in the name of jesus i open the book of remembrance 
in every sector of your life. We open the book of remembrance that today you are remembered for signs and wonders. You are remembered for good. That God will cause men to remember you in this season. In the name of Jesus, I decree that God will cause men to remember you for good, remember you for testimonies, remember you for good in the name of Jesus. We open the book of remembrance today that every good work that you have done, every good thing that you have done in the lives of men and the gospel that heaven remembers you today in the name of Jesus. I hear a door open towards you and the adversaries are taken down by apostolic and prophetic angels in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that your head will not go down in shame. Your head is lifted up in praise that men will not see you on the floor. They will see you so are in, in this season. In the name of Jesus, as we come to the month of March, I decree that you march triumphantly in that month. You are successful in all things and in every way. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare abundance upon your life and everything that concerns. I decree abundance in the name of Jesus. And money won't leave your hand. It will leave your hand for the gospel. That every money that has left your hand to help people and for the gospel is coming back in dimensions in quantum leaps in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i hear the lord say i will restore i will restore all the years that the canker woman the caterpillar and the palmer worm has taken from you i would restore says god i will restore says god i will restore you're coming into a season of great restoration in the name of jesus look up to where the action is do not be distracted in the name of Jesus, do not be distracted for the opportunities opportunities in this season. And it is coming to you with ease in the name of Jesus. I decree God's blessing and God's best for you this week. You would soar. You will see miracles on every side in the name of Jesus. That what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. Your life will be a testament of the grace and the mercies of God in dimensions that people would then look at you and say this is the lord's doing i break you out of every addiction every stronghold and everything that has kept you down i decree that grace is released upon you in the name of jesus that you run overtake and recover all in the name of jesus i decree that the chains are destroyed in the name of jesus everyone bounds loosed in the name of jesus i decree speed is released upon your life this week this day this time in the name of jesus you are blessed with the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. I decree that there is nothing the devil can do about this in the name of Jesus. You are the blessed of the Lord. You are the blessed of the Lord in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You wouldn't be able to keep up. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings blessings, blessings, pouring up like wine in the name of Jesus. You are blessed with all the blessings of God that makes rich and added no sorrow. For you carry the blesser and all his blessings within you. Christ is in you. For blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are the blessed of the Lord. And you're not just a blessing. You're not just blessed. You are a blessing to your word. People see you and they are blessed. People touch you and they are blessed. People encounter you and they receive the miracles. You are a dispenser of the blessings of God in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody, I see you smiling for joy. I see you rejoicing. I see your tears being wiped up. I see laughter in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to somebody who's been crying lately. God is saying, I just saw you. God is wiping your tears and there is a laughter, 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 laughter. It's going to bring beauty out of your situation. Laughter, laughter. In the name of Jesus, we decree to be so in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. People of God, we're done with First Timothy. Tomorrow we start Second Timothy by God's grace. 
tomorrow is that second timothy chapter number one can you imagine just this year it's not the end of february we've done ephesians we've done colossians we've done philippians we've done first thessalonians we've done second thessalonians we've done the book of first timothy we continue tomorrow with second timothy seven books in the name of jesus get ready to laugh you're going to laugh you carry the blessing and you have joy i hear joy and laughter in my spirit I hear joy and laughter in my spirit. I hear joy and laughter. If you have been crying, wipe your eyes, wipe your tears. God is really going to make you laugh. I hear joy and laughter. Joy and laughter. Joy and laughter is coming to your life. It's coming. You've been weeping. God is really going to make you laugh. In the name of Jesus. I love you. I'll have a flourishing week ahead of you. I'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Invite your friends to join us. Blessings.